Let's go look for video games and children's toys uh, at Goodwill on a national holiday because I've lost control of my goddamn life. Starting us off with this Darth Vader hot cocoa uh, thing, 10 bucks. Actually, not a bad buy at $10, factory sealed. And then the Star City Games box inside of the uh, display case, it can only mean one thing. Magic the Gathering cards, and obviously not a lot of time to decide if I want to buy this or not. Scrolling through, seeing rare foils immediately, probably a good sign. However, $30 price tag is grueling for Magic cards, which are so rare to retain any value. Um one out of a hundred or so keeps some sort of value the rest are worthless and that's for every set so difficult decision and we can see albums which i've never really seen at a goodwill this might be the first time i've ever seen these they're probably common around the country but just at my local ones never seen these and there's a big market halo combat evolved i don't think i've ever not seen the game of the year edition every single one i ever see has that game of the year edition i need to find the og one that came out when the system did and getting involved with loons uh looney tunes game i've actually never seen this e ever anywhere it looks like it's cell shaded i don't know anything about it uh on xbox and i believe multi-plat but cool to see a game that i've kind of never seen before either game hunting in person or online and uh, getting involved with some of these weird sports games, um, both from the same company and both just completely irrelevant in 2019. Um, EA is just kind of taking, completely taking over the market for sports. And we're getting into some probably connect schlock. We're in the movies. And this was really the generation, this console generation, especially with the Wii, was the generation for uh, shovelware. Speaking of which, this Wii uh, guitar in this kind of untraditional vertical view that everyone seems to film anytime there's a big event people film vertically for some reason and golf clubs always take a look through here for just kind of newer looking things and then sometimes i'll buy them and take them to play it against sports and get some nice store credit some monitors here not a good selection pretty ghetto very few that even have hdmi so i'm going to skip um, even 4k monitors are starting to kind of be more and more accessible, less and less expensive, if you will. And some laser tag stuff. This is really cool. This is a blast from the past from the 90s. You can see some Skylanders and those Disney Infinity uh, platforms. There's a bunch of those Disney Infinity figures in the glass case, way overpriced. And we can see something from the Atari 2600 here. Star Raiders. Uh, if there's a bigger market for Atari, I probably would have picked this up just out of principle. But I left it behind just because no one collects Atari, unfortunately. It was a little too early for a lot of gamers. Quick look at the board games. I love the board game selection in this store. It's always huge, and there's always factory sealed games. This puzzle really caught my eye up here uh, of the White House, or the Capitol building, rather, but not factory sealed, so I'm sure it's going to be like torn to shreds. And a couple of various PC games. I always check the PC, or I should say the CD-ROM area. See a lot of these like mid 90s PC games. Some of them actually still have some value, but more importantly, you'll see some PlayStation 1 games. And when they're in the CD area, typically the manager did not uh, price check or look at anything. So it's a good way for you to kind of score a valuable game. Maybe one of the few ways to get valuable games uh, in 2019 is to find PS1 games not checked. So I spent $30 on Magic the Gathering cards. Uh, completely lost my damn mind. My theory with buying, especially garage sales and stuff, is always buy first and then second guess later because uh, 20, 30 bucks is replaceable, but missing out on like a big ass thousand dollar find, not replaceable. I'm gonna hit another Goodwill right now, continue doing some game hunting. Um, and then when I get home, probably do a post video thing going through all the cards really quickly for you guys that care about Magic the Gathering. There's a ton in here from 1996. And I know that's like one of the, and I think Magic Gathering came out in like 94, so that's pretty damn new. But I wasn't gonna sit at the store and uh, go through eBay and shit on every listing, so I just bought it. Uh, I did try to haggle with the manager. I said, this price is a little bit silly for these cards. She thought about it and then she just said, no. She's like, you can come back and get it on a 50% off day uh, and I'm not gonna come back to the store. So ended up picking it up. Probably gonna be a waste of money, but again, Worst case scenario, I lost 30 bucks. 
Uh, worst case scenario, leave it on the shelves. Who knows, maybe there's a Black Lotus or something in there from Alpha or Beta. So stay tuned to the very end of the video if you guys wanna see what's in there. But like I said, man, a ton of stuff from 96, a ton of foil cards. Um, I, I noticed holographics and stuff immediately when I first opened it, so I was real surprised. Usually when you see boxes like that, it's bulk, it's gonna be land or commons, but there's rares and there's old stuff in there, so. Uh, I'm sure if I sold every single card individually, I could easily get my $30 back. But we're always looking for that one or two valuable cards, uh, force of will or whatever, you know, $40 cards from an uh, older generation. So we'll look at that at the end of the video. Let's go to this next goodwill now. So heading into the higher income goodwill, uh, this is the one where I usually find the good stuff. And we can see a console immediately, PS1. It's like seeing a friend from high school. I haven't seen one of these forever. And if you look on the left, you can see a Nintendo Wii as well. And uh, seeing more and more of these like VCR DVD combos. For some reason, apparently there's some value. And there's definitely value here. A voice karaoke machine. I know this came with a game on like PS3 and Xbox 360 generation. And it actually has some value. And really excited to see these in the uh, kind of generic wire areas. Um, PS1 dual analog controllers obviously came right in with that console. And this Platinum one, seven bucks, a steep price tag. But uh, definitely gonna pick this up. And then we can see uh, also a black one in a little bit, a little bit worse shape, a little bit dustier. But uh, really cool to see those on store shelves. And I remember these little dealer no deal games used to have a ton of value. I don't think anyone plays these anymore. The generation that played them, unfortunately, is all dead now. But 10 years ago, you could go uh, get those. And I wish Mega Bloks didn't exist so LEGO could get the rights to some of these cool franchises. This is really cool. $5 for this factory sealed Mega Bloks Terminator Genesis, which might have been the worst film ever made, objectively. I'm not sure. But man, Khaleesi cannot act. Uh, Crimson Skies, this was, I believe, a launch title on Xbox. A really cool find. I see it all the time at this Goodwill. Maybe I just see the same one over and over again. And we can see Mist and uh, Riven down here. These games can be purchased brand new for incredibly cheap. Um, so not worth seeing it, even when you see the big box with the OG like Walmart price tag from the 90s. Really cool to see. If you're a PC gamer, probably a cool thing to put on the shelf, but again, you can buy them for cheap. And this was cool. I almost picked this up if it wasn't Platinum Hits. Uh, I believe it's backwards compatible on the 1X. So guys, can't believe how lucky I just got a Goodwill. Uh, waited in line for a few minutes to pick up this. And when I finally got to the glass case to pay, I decided I might as well check out that PlayStation 1, uh, which is right here. And inside, Bomberman Fantasy Race. This is like a $20 plus game. Uh, no case or anything, but that's like the first valuable game I found at Goodwill in like 100 million years. Um, so always check. I, I plugged in that Wii as well and went and checked that. But uh, what really completed the value here was all of this stuff was kind of hidden away. I didn't notice it when I first walked in. Everything you need for it, these ghetto old controllers, the memory card, uh, complete package there so yeah that is pretty sick um let's go home and i'll i'll show you guys all this stuff closer oh what's going on guys so i got all this stuff uh wednesday before thanksgiving and amazing day uh, at least for 2019 this was an awesome day at goodwill i saw a bunch of cool stuff and i walked out i mean you can see i walked out with a bunch of stuff from two stores so completely uncharacteristic of basically the last two years of Goodwill where I maybe get one item. I got several items, old video game related uh, playing cards from the 90s. So really good day. Starting off with this, in my opinion, incredibly overpriced. I don't know what the manager was thinking. 30 bucks, uh, Star City Games. I saw this in the display case. I knew exactly what it was going to be when I saw Star City Games. Magic the Gathering. Uh, normally leave, almost always leave, uh, Magic the Gathering yard sales or, you know, especially Craigslist, offer up any of that stuff. Never seen them at Goodwill and I was 100% planning on leaving it. But uh, the first cards I kind of started going through were, it was rares and foils. So I, I got to thinking like maybe this person um, didn't 
sort these usually you see in these boxes you see bulk you see junk you see like land like this is all land right here in this bag and it's all completely worthless but when i started going through it i saw a bunch of rares you can see a rare right there rares and foils so i set out everything of interest here i'm going to show you guys this is the very end of the video i don't want to take up 10 minutes showing it i'll flip through it for you match the gathering fans uh, a bunch of cards from like the very mid 90s like you can see this one 1994 so that's that's early this is an early set um but they're all a lot of them are commons from the 90s so i don't think they're worth anything but still really cool to see stuff from like basically when the game first came out uh it was before they had any sort of lore so they were just kind of using like generic like elves and uh i remember the knights of arabia or whatever was just using like real life stuff from uh the history of mankind not from their own little made-up universe so I'm gonna show you guys these, a bunch of foils, a bunch of rares, and then a bunch of cards from the mid 90s. I'll flip through that at the end of the video. Uh, as far as is it worth 30 bucks, I haven't done any price checking, but I don't know. If you guys are, are Magic Gathering experts and you watch it, just call it out. If you see anything worthwhile or anything of note, let me know. Um, but I'm gonna guess probably not worth 30 bucks. If I were to sell it all individually, I could probably get close to my money back, but uh, I'll probably toss it. I have a bunch of boxes exactly like this. Um, in my closet from Magic the Gathering. I've been playing for over 10 years, so I'll probably just toss this with the boxes. 30 bucks, we'll call it a loss, but it'll just be adding to my collection, really. And this was really cool. Um, I'll, I'll skip to the system for the end, but saw this on the shelves, and in 2019, 100% gonna buy this. What was it, uh, seven bucks? Platinum dual analog PS2 controller. 100% uh, went with the system that someone traded in, but of course, Goodwill pieced it out. And uh, there was a generic black one as well. Probably would have been a decent pickup for seven bucks, but these platinum ones, just because they're less common, and uh, because again, it is 2019 and video game stuff is becoming rarer and rarer, especially from this generation. When I started game hunting, PlayStation 2 stuff was everywhere. I would have ignored this so fast back in like 2012. But uh, today, I mean, it's just, it's so uncommon. When I see stuff like this at Goodwill, even if it's not a great value, I'm going to pick it up just on principle, if nothing else, because I'm not going to see another one of these for a long time uh, outside of maybe a yard sale, maybe the swap meet if I ever get back. So a really good condition, really nice retention from the joysticks. And then you always look at these, the condition of this rubber. Uh, sometimes it's kind of worn out. This is, this is a pretty new control controller. No issues with it. So platinum. Uh, awesome buy at seven dollars. I wish it was cheaper, but beggars can't be choosers uh, at thrift stores in 2019. So getting into the system, uh, saw it just like this in the display case. So I was like, yeah, 20 bucks for a Baron PS1. Probably going to skip it. Uh, as I was checking out, I asked her to open it just on the off chance. And I saw a pretty valuable game, Bomberman Fantasy Race. I don't even know if this came out in North America. An Atlas game, as you can see. Um, obviously, it's going to be a Mario Kart racer. Solid condition. You can see that old school, like, black color of the disc. And we'll see. I, I, I always read in forums and stuff. People are worried that these PS1 games are going to deteriorate kind of rapidly and stop working uh, in the next decade or so because of, like, rot. We'll see if that ends up happening. But so far... 2019 we're still looking good uh, again condition solid system solid but 20 bucks would have been a rough buy but kind of hidden away was this bag so a little bit of advice when you see systems like this kind of look around in the display case or in the store and a lot of times the manager is going to throw everything in a bag you can see everything right here and separate price tag but um it does say set right there, so I ended. I got all of this for twenty bucks. Probably would not have bought all of this for forty, although it is enticing. Let me open up this stuff really quick and show you guys all of it individually. I should have done that before I started the video. So here's the contents of the bag. Uh, so exciting! These old school controllers. Uh, I never, you never see these anymore. I always see the ones with the dual analog already, but these are the old school ps1 controllers and these are in really really nice shape they just have a completely different feel to them like they their angle and stuff is just completely different than the later model playstation controllers and i remember playing P 
PS1 when it first came out. I played that dinosaur game. I don't remember what it was called. It was a Jurassic Park game, I think. And you fought as dinosaurs. It was really cool. Uh, old school PlayStation memory card in really nice condition. Again, kind of less and less common to see these out in the wild. Um, as this incredibly annoying vehicle is like backing up in front of my house. And of course, we have the power cable and component cable. Everything super professionally done, uh, wrapped up with rubber bands. I don't know if the donator did this or if the Goodwill manager took the time to do this. But for 20 bucks, I mean, this is this is an awesome value right here, this system. Throwing in the game, it's an absolute no-brainer. But even without the game, I probably would have picked this up for 20 bucks. Two awesome condition controllers um, from the generation. I'm going to be putting this on the bookshelf. Uh, unless you, if you guys are interested in trading, as always, DM me day one white on Instagram. That's the only place I'll respond to DMs. Uh, I don't use YouTube Messenger. I don't do Facebook. None of that stuff. Day one white over to Instagram. Um, if you guys DM me interested in trades and stuff, I'll always hit hit you back. I always prefer to trade stuff over selling it, especially when um, the value and stuff is not incredible i'd prefer to just trade for something of equal value than to try to waste time getting money uh right now i'm really collecting nintendo switch and 4k is like the two kind of primary things i'm collecting so that is it guys drop a thumbs up i'm gonna go through this pile really quick for those magic the gathering fans that want to see if there's anything in value of value again i don't know i didn't ebay price or anything so who knows if there's a thousand dollar card in there i'm gonna guess no there was not force of will but there was stuff from that set so I was hoping for that one when I saw that that set was there. But uh, let's go through the magic cards. Drop a thumbs up, guys, for game hunting. I'm going to try to keep doing this at least bi-weekly, maybe even weekly if I can uh, get the time. I'm hoping that offer up, and I'm hoping that Craigslist is going to start popping off because of the holiday season, everyone is really desperate for money. Everyone's trying to get cash. So we actually see some good bundles at good prices. If you have money, it's a really good time to go pull the trigger on some stuff. Let's get into these magic cards right now. Uh, for those that do want to watch, everyone else, I'll see you later. I'm trying to figure out how I can do this easily. Let's zoom it in here. There we go. And we're just going to kind of go through it quickly. Just love these old, the old, old magic cards. You can always tell just by the art and the borders and stuff. And then we'll get into, you can see some rares. There's a bunch of foils in here, a ton of foils. Even a couple foil rares. But I don't think there's any value in foils outside of uh, the rare ones that people still use. But I don't know if with Magic, I mean, there's so many, there's just so many tens of thousands of cards now. I don't know what's valuable, who collects what. Is it valuable unless it's like getting play time? Or is it just valuable because it's rare? Or is it valuable? I don't know. I need to do Pokemon cards again because that was easier and funner. But typically with Magic, at least as far as I know, stuff has to be in circulation. Um, and like kind of the meta for the pro scene or whatever to be valuable. Outside of that, I think a lot of this stuff, once it hits legacy or whatever, is not worth anything anymore. But a lot of foils. This is the set I kind of quit on. This, I think it was Ab called Avacyn Restored or something. This is the set I was playing a lot of. This is cool. This is some sort of promo card, I think. Probably had to go to a tur uh, tournament or something to get that from a store. All sorts of foils. And some old ass cards, no 1995. The old cards are funny because they're just so, most of them are so useless. Besides the few that are overpowered, 96. Look at 
Look at this artwork. This is just great. Macabre. So here's a rare foil. A couple rare foils in the mix here. Here's another rare foil. And another rare foil. And another rare foil. It's a really cool artwork. I like that a lot. And another rare foil. So these are the rare foils I kind of saw. That's why I decided to buy the box, even though 30 is absurd. Think about it as buying a lottery ticket. Almost no way you're gonna make anything off it, but I almost felt bad if I left it on the shelves because I was like, what if there was that one valuable card? But that is it, guys. Anything in the mix that was of interest to you, if you're a Magic player or a collector, let me know. Uh, the res is pretty much bulk, but thanks for watching, guys. Take care. See you later.